We often think that big choices are the only way to change our lives. Although Stoicism has been practiced for thousands of years, it still holds great wisdom. It teaches us the opposite of what the great Stoics Seneca, Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius did, showed that real growth and happiness come from doing small things over and over again. Big things might seem small, like writing in a notebook or reading a few pages. Every day or simply listening attentively cannot possibly make a difference, a big effect. But if you do these things regularly, they set the stage for a life of stability, meaning, and inner peace. I was skeptical at first about the idea of a life of stability, meaning, and inner peace. You might be now, though, after years of working with famous and successful people. People I've come to recognize the truth of Stoicism as the primary distinction. No matter how small, there is a difference between those who achieve and those who don't. People make small decisions and habits every day. In today's video, we'll start with a look at 10 small habits that can make a big difference in your life. These aren't just quick tips, they're a way of life based on Stoicism, philosophy that is meant to help us not only deal with problems, but also find our inner strength. What I'm about to share isn't just theory, these are useful ideas. I draw from my personal life experiences and the profound teachings of Stoic philosophy. A habit can change you, but only if you're ready to accept and maintain focus on the current task and avoid missing any important details. Right now, before we start, promise yourself to like this video. This simple step may indicate your readiness to change and grow. Are you ready to start changing your life? Let's look at each habit and see how powerful it is. One of these small but powerful things, gratitude, often perceived as a minor habit, has the power to transform everything. Being thankful does not shape our perspective or ultimately determine how we live in Stoicism, not just a fleeting emotion, but a state of mind, a deep statement of peace. And Marcus Aurelius suggested that upon waking up in the morning, one should consider what a blessing it is to be living to think about, enjoy, love, and be thankful for him. Did you find happiness in even the simplest things in life when you woke up? It's a common belief that only thankful people are thankful for big moments in your work, special occasions, gifts or milestones. Stoicism, on the other hand, helps us value even the smallest things. Details. Consider the coffee you consume each morning, rather than simply drinking it to wake up. Take a moment to enjoy the taste. Several people have handled the coffee from the plant to your cup. Table praise goes beyond just the coffee. It includes thanks. Our minds often reflect on all the things that led up to that moment for you. When we're unhappy with our lives, we only notice what's missing or lacking. It's not perfect, but if we shift our focus to the positive and express gratitude for what we have, a quiet magic happens. Being thankful is like a stream that feeds our minds and hearts. It demonstrates that there is always something to look forward to, even when things are bad. By being thankful, we can find peace in our minds and the strength to keep going. What we hold dear each day is what makes us valuable, not what we lack. It makes us value ourselves more and improves our relationships with others. It gives us more faith in our journey instead of making us feel limited. Being thankful for what's missing allows you to find joy in the little things in life. We find peace in the important things that help us overcome life's many challenges. This requires you to be grateful every day. Try writing down how you feel. Every night, write down three things you're thankful for in a book or on a phone app. Identify three things that you were grateful for that day. They don't have to be significant. Maybe it's a friend's laughter, a lovely funeral, or a supportive word from someone. It helps you see the good things in life, 
which builds a sense of being positive, as Marcus Aurelius said, is what makes your life happy. Your thoughts and thanks are some of the best things about you. Are you prepared to live with the soul? Second habit, making goals. Have you ever felt like you didn't know what to do? This is a common feeling in today's world, where we have so many options that it can be challenging to decide what to do or why to do it. Setting goals can help you get out of a rut. Setting goals helps us figure out what's most important to us. Epictetus once said, First tell yourself what you want to be, and then do what you have. Question, who do you want to become? Then take steps to become that person. In fact, having a clear goal keeps you from getting lost in daily difficulties and helps you set priorities. Picture someone who wants to improve their health but doesn't have enough. Set clear goals for their food and exercise. If they don't, they might give up. They eat at random times and only work out when they feel the urge, but with clear goals like working out for 30 minutes every day or eating well. Five days a week when they set goals, it's much easier for them to see how to move forward. Tells us to pay attention to what we can control, which means that instead of setting goals, we should aim high, such as becoming well-known or admired by others. Pay attention to specific things, such as whether you are a student. Instead of wishing for high grades, try to do better in school. What is the difference between setting clear goals for daily study time and reviewing materials on a weekly basis? Concentrating on the process rather than the outcome fortifies the mind and shields it against. When you have a plan, think about outside factors. Take a moment to ask yourself, do I really want to reach this goal or is it just a passing thought? Do you truly want this? Or is it just a response to outside pressure on this journey? I can change the most important things, but some are out of my power. What will I do if I fail? Can I change things and keep going? Will I continue moving forward or will I give up and stop? These questions not only help me understand, not only do they show us the way, but they also remind us of what our goals are really about. We must distinguish between our genuine needs and our mere desires. Most people plan their day. I believe it's sufficient to simply remember the key points each day, but let me clarify something. Planning your day with one main goal in mind every morning can make a big difference. When you wake up, ask yourself, what can I do today that will really make this day feel like today? Choose a meaningful task that, when completed, will leave you. When you're pleased with your choice and sure of it, write it down clearly. Clearly this is your goal for the day. Take a few minutes to write it down. Make it a priority in your mind right away. Surprisingly, the mind loves having a mission. It will immediately begin searching for ways, choices and opportunities. Throughout the day, you'll see yourself taking steps to reach that goal. You can trust that every decision will help you finish your biggest task. This is the method by which you construct your life, day by day, component by component. When you look back, you'll see that these easy but steady goals have helped you reach your goal. You've gone farther than you thought possible with your third habit. Writing them down in a journal is an important next step to stay on track after you've set clear goals. One way to stay motivated is to start writing in a journal. If your goals are like a lighthouse guiding you, then writing in a journal will help you stay motivated. It is the guide that helps you stay mentally stable and aware of yourself during the journey. A book isn't just a place to write down good things that happen or failures. It serves as a tool for analysis and reflection, enabling you to gain a deep understanding. You have a special power when you write down all your thoughts every day. Your goals and dreams can only be fully understood when you write down your thoughts. They don't disappear as quickly, though they are still hazy. They come to life and feel real, as if you created them. Writing things down with a pen clears your mind 
and provides a fresh perspective. You are leaving a calm and quiet place without these journal entries on your mind. The room becomes cluttered with ideas and unfinished business. Writing in a book about faded dreams is also a fantastic way to set and track goals. Stoicism values daily growth and the process of small steps. Self-improvement. Keeping a record allows you to monitor your progress. One straightforward example is making a fitness goal and writing down every day you work out. Writing in a book lets you keep track of both the progress you make and the problems you solve. This is a rare break in the busyness of life. It's a chance to find yourself and listen to the quiet whispers of your heart. These are the feelings you don't want to express or acknowledge in the midst of the chaos. When you're busy, each page of your journal becomes a window into your soul. This is where you can be honest with yourself about happiness, sadness, or even short-term anger. Although these words may not be read by others, they aid in your understanding and accept every part of yourself. Hold yourself gently and with kindness. Feelings that come to the surface. Writing every day doesn't take hours, just a few short minutes. The act of putting down all the noise of everyday life and letting your mind wander. The page is free, and sometimes it only takes five or ten minutes. It's important to be honest with yourself and record small joys, problems, reflections, or even thoughts. It doesn't have to be perfect. As the pen leads you through these normal feelings, something deep and real comes to mind. Amazing things start to happen every day, and you'll find your mind. Your clarity is increasing, your focus is strengthening, and a subtle sense of progress is beginning to emerge. Keeping a book is only a small step, but all of these steps make your connection with yourself that helps you understand, respect, and discover a fuller version of who you are as a habit. I have been reading about Stoics who spent their entire lives contemplating and seeking inner peace. Clarity saw reading as a way to get better and learn more about the world. Reading didn't just help them learn, it also helped them grow. Mind and getting to a deeper level of understanding, but in modern life many people say, I don't have time, but ask yourself, can you? Spend 15 minutes browsing through social media, even though you claim to have no spare time. Do you lack time, or are you wasting it on something pointless? Sometimes, a quiet moment of reflection can reveal this. Daily reading is an unreplaceable investment in your soul and mind. And even when we do read, it's easy to fall into the habit of reading lines quickly without really understanding what they mean. It's akin to merely skimming the surface of the water, not delving deeper to uncover its depths. The secret gems below are things that real Stoics don't just know. Read to understand, and truly immerse yourself in the content through focused reading. Paying attention lets you learn priceless things that improve your intellectually and spiritually. Start by making choices that are important to you. Reading books and articles with the aim of expanding your mind can help you come up with new ideas. Be aware that every book you own contains a dedication. Books are a wonderful way for people to share their ideas, experiences and knowledge. When you read every day, you use one of the best ways to pass on information and share life's lessons. As a habit, you feed your mind with information, advice, and a deeper understanding of life. Reading about life doesn't take hours every day. It only takes 10 to 15 minutes. Reading every day on purpose adds up over time, like interest in a bank account. Take into account how this accumulated information leads to big changes over time. It changes how you see the world, how you deal with issues, and how you see yourself. Challenges Books are more than just a collection of pages. They hold fragments of knowledge. Read these books to build a better life, one piece at a time. 
You lose yourself in the thoughts of great thinkers and gain insight from their lives and experiences. But Seneca said, it's important to sort through what is. Finally, remember to read, discuss, and incorporate philosophy into your discussions. Stoics emphasize the importance of putting this difference into action through the habit of reading. Not only should we discuss ideas, but we should also actively pursue them. Years ago, working a 10-hour day was the only thing that mattered in my life. I never felt like I had enough. Worry, pressure and never-ending work made me feel heavy, weighed heavily on my mind and body, and one day I chose to try a run. Even that day, the morning run began with a slow walk around the park nearby. I felt like my mind had become clear after just ten minutes of walking. Not having to carry its weight, I thought to myself, maybe I need to start my day with more joy. As I trained more often, Serene learned how important it was to getting to know myself. Can we really be mentally strong if our bodies are weak? Every time I pushed myself to make the workout harder, I got exhausted and weak. I had to push myself during my workout, whether I was trying to run farther or do a harder practice. I initially believed that tearing down walls was impossible. There were times when I was exhausted and wanted to give up. I remember once running. I walked about five kilometers in the hot sun and every step felt heavy. Then I told myself, if I can't get through this, how will I handle the bigger challenge? I learned from problems in my life that I thought would push me to the finish line. Problems are inevitable, and overcoming them is crucial. Seneca once said that problems make the mind stronger, and so does self-growth. Work makes the body move. One morning I went for a walk. As they stepped onto the wet road, a light rain started to fall. As the cool breeze touched my skin, I felt my body and mind merge into a peaceful state. With each steady step, the day's stresses and fears began to show up around me. Fade. At that point, exercise wasn't just for getting in shape. It was a it's time to reconnect with myself, a form of moving meditation where I solely focus on myself. I felt truly present and untouched in every breath, step, and feeling. By the stresses of modern life, if someone asked me why I back, how can one incorporate exercise into a busy life? I'd only answer that only with a strong, resilient body can we handle life's bigger obstacles. Do something nice for yourself, even if it's just for a short time. Put on your shoes every day and walk or jog in the park. Participate in any sport that interests you, and don't be afraid to move around. Every step and breath should be a sign of health, and the sixth trait of perseverance is rest. We often think of rest as we only treat ourselves after we've completed everything else. We become enmeshed in a cycle of work and stress, exhausting us to such an extent. Imagine someone working in an artistic field. Even the smallest joys get lost. Consider a writer who is attempting to write every day without taking a break. If they took a deep breath, would they still be able to come up with new ideas? Rest is more than just a night's sleep. People eventually grow weary of it. When we close our eyes and relax in front of the TV or under a warm blanket, we're letting ourselves step back. Escape to escape the invisible strains of contemporary existence. As people, we live in a world that always seems to be in a hurry. Being busy all the time has become the standard for success. But is that really what success means? Whether it's how many hours we work or how much stress we can handle, rest is an important part of life. Not knowing when to take a break is an important part of being productive. It's not a sign of laziness. It's a strategy for productivity. We are taking care of ourselves and getting ready to return to work with renewed energy. When we give our minds a break to rest and recover, we find more. Even the most complicated tools can be creative and solve problems. We require breaks between cycles. So why do we force them to continue? Always, a lot of us might think rest is a waste of time, 
but it's the way to take a moment to think about when you last recharged your mind. Real break. Can you tell the difference? Does your heart feel lighter? Warmer? If not, you might need to look into deeper ways to rest. You're completely removed from work and technology, leaving just you. So, how can we transform rest into productive time? Set aside a few minutes every day for yourself to make this a good habit. Maybe it's early in the morning, when your mind is still fresh from the day. Tasks or in the evening, when you have time to think about the day, try to sit in, let go of all your thoughts, pay attention to your breaths, and give yourself time to. If you really calm down, you'll notice a change. Let's learn to stop at the right time and enjoy the little things in life. If you're ready to make a commitment, take a moment to enjoy the peace that stillness brings. Put in a comment that says, pause at the right time and let's build this. Useful habit with habit seven. We all know about this habit, but we don't actually practice it. Imagine yourself on a hectic day, caught in traffic, when you hear the horns of angry drivers, what comes to mind? Anger and restlessness can lead to lash outs, but if we look deeper, we can pause, inhale deeply, and pose a question. We asked ourselves, can I control this traffic? Can I make any changes to this right now? The clear answer is no. Rather than worrying, consider taking these few steps, minutes to read a book, listen to some soothing music, or just watch the while the world around you waits, you find peace, and this helps you stay away. Having to deal with rejection or adverse feelings is a bigger test of patience. Failure. Consider the instances where you submitted job applications and received no response. Letters of refusal, sadness, and even the urge to give up are that it will happen. But waiting here is like a guiding light, telling you not to. It wasn't very helpful for Epictetus to teach people to give up and keep going. A fig or a bunch of grapes do not appear out of thin air. If you tell me you want a fig, I'll give it to you. Answer that there must be a time for it to first bloom and then bear fruit. Every failure is part of the journey, and patience helps. Know that you can't rush success and that life must flow freely. It takes a long time for grapes to turn into delicious wine. So how can we get into the habit? To cultivate patience, begin by altering your mindset rather than anticipating immediate results. Focus on the long term. Picture a tiny seed that needs time to grow. Grow up and become a strong tree. You can't make it grow in a few days. We must take care of it every day, knowing that patience and its natural state are essential. In the same way, you won't reach your life goals right away. Waiting is the act of keeping faith in the long journey, and embracing each step forward, regardless of its speed, is crucial. If you're making progress, have you ever thought about why you give up so quickly when things don't go your way? It could be because you haven't fully appreciated the trip you're on. Instead of concentrating solely on the final result, pause and consider. Seeing the value in each step will increase your patience and you'll succeed. Understand that success isn't just about achieving the goal, it's also about the journey to get there. Rising and moving forward habit 8. Listening. Now that we've mastered the virtue of patience, let's examine another closely related virtue. Listening with patience teaches us to stop and think before we respond. When things don't go our way, listening is the next step that will help us. We should open our hearts to truly understand others in today's fast-paced world. Individuals who frequently become engrossed in their own narratives find listening challenging. Being able to lose ourselves in another world is a rare but necessary skill. Telling someone's story demonstrates to them that their feelings and thoughts are genuine. Imagine a common situation. You're talking with a friend who's telling you about their problems. Are you really listening 
or are you just waiting for your turn? Too often you give advice or voice your opinion instead. After truly listening, we tend to immediately offer solutions or even pass judgment. The author explains that listening is one way to develop self-control and a better understanding of how people work. When was the last time you truly listened to someone? Can you learn to do it on your own? Allowing your ego to interfere with listening not only enhances your understanding of others, but also lets you learn more about yourself. A Stoic wants to get better. They can enhance their skills by performing even minor tasks, such as listening. By listening, we can understand what other people are feeling and thinking. This, in turn, makes us more tolerant and patient at work. Listening is an important skill for making relationships last and creating a respectful atmosphere. People in charge don't just talk, they listen to their team. For instance, when a boss takes the initiative, spending time to hear their problems or ideas helps build trust and support, a spirit of unity. This not only helps the business grow, but it also makes it a habit to create a setting where everyone feels heard and respected. Today, when someone talks to you, put aside other things that might be distracting you and pay full attention. Keep your attention on them and resist the temptation to criticize or interrupt them. Patience lets you say no, there's no need to answer right away. Instead, the person lets the talk flow. The best way to get what you want is to let the other person tell you everything. It is important to fully understand their story and treat them with respect and care. Don't give them advice unless they truly want it. Sometimes people just want some guidance. You need someone to listen, not a solution that requires additional effort. Pay close attention to the benefits you'll get from this straightforward action. Give Marcus Aurelius the nine most important habits. Being a positive person and working for the good of everyone is what Stoics see as the result of this life. Giving means living for something other than yourself, not just getting something. Sharing money, goods and time entails providing information, demonstrating kindness, and being kind to others brings us together as a group and strengthens our core. Values A friend of mine worked in a high-stress job for a long time. He often felt alone and overwhelmed in a high-pressure workplace where he wasn't looking for help. He began teaching children on the weekends for his own comfort. At the charitable center, he slowly learned that helping people in need made him happy. Having kids not only made him feel less stressed, but they also brought him a new sense of peace. His new habit changed the way he saw life, making him pleased and more grateful. Stoicism teaches us that giving lightens our minds, it liberates us from self-obsession and fleeting desires. Putting aside our wants and material things and focusing our energy on when we provide service, we control our greed and practice time management. We ask ourselves, does giving always require big, not small actions? Sincere acts often have a significant impact. To start, help a co-worker. Spending a moment to listen to someone's story or simply saying hello can make a big difference. These small, seemingly insignificant actions can have a big impact on other people's lives. A woman I know says she gets up early every morning to make food for the homeless people near her home. When asked why, she explained that her neighborhood gave her life purpose. This small habit, which is replete with affection, brings her joy on a daily basis as she is aware that she is doing something beneficial for other people. Start with small things near you. Don't feel rushed or doubtful. It's your power to make a change. I used to be doubtful, thinking that someone as self-centered as I was couldn't make it a habit to give. But over time, I knew that change was possible and that every day is a chance to start over. Every morning ask yourself, who can I help today? Giving doesn't have to be a negative thing. Be proud that your sincerity can make a difference for other people and yourself. 
Epictetus said that the most important thing is to be with the right people. You should only hang out with people who make you feel good and whose presence makes you feel good. Your best, the places we live, and the people we hang out with, affect not only our attitude, but they also have a big effect on how we think. So, have you ever asked yourself if the people closest to you really bring out the best in you? Hanging out with people who share your beliefs brings out the best in you. When we work to improve ourselves, we build a strong base for peace and growth. Conversely, if we coexist and collaborate with individuals who consistently voice complaints, if we engage in competition or propagate negativity, we may soon succumb to those who do. Let's say you're experiencing the same emotionally exhausting feelings. Living a healthier life and paying more attention to what you eat is important. It's much harder to stay on track when people make fun of your choices than when they're around. In actuality, when we surround ourselves with friends who respect and support our choices, being with the right people inspires us and teaches us how to focus. We should prioritize our personal growth over meeting new people's standards, but that doesn't mean we don't let people with different ideas in. Instead, it's about finding people who add value and understand. Those who push us but do so in a way that respects our journey should look at a familiar example. In your daily work life, let's say you're on a team where everyone helps each other out and looks for ways to make growth possible in a place like that. Your, they are likely to learn new things faster, improve what they already know and find more reason in your work. But if your team is full of unfair criticism, envy, and this type of intense competition can exhaust you and potentially cause harm. If you have low self-esteem and confidence, you might find yourself worrying about unnecessary things. Stresses that stop you from being creative and enthusiastic, plus being around the right people, make it easier for us to think about ourselves, which is a key idea in Stoicism. Surround yourself with positive friends or co-workers who are like a mirror. Giving us a better picture of our own actions and beliefs, if they lead living moral lives and always seeking knowledge, they naturally push us to think about our own lives and be careful when picking friends. Consider your friends and family and ask yourself, does this person help me grow or hold me back? Be courageous and implement the necessary changes. This knowledge will light the way you are on your way to a life filled with thought and the peace you deserve. We deserve to start this journey with these small habits one at a time. Step by step, you'll start to notice a big change in your life and mind. Stoicism isn't some far-off idea. It's a way of life, a way of choosing each day. Thoughts, actions and responses, habits like being thankful and patient, Careful listening, even if it seems like a small thing, can bring stability to your mind. Change the way you look at any problem. Sometimes the easiest things are the hardest. Hold the most power. Each habit is like a small stone that helps you build a strong foundation. It's okay to start small when making life changes. A little, and soon you'll feel a calm, peaceful light spreading through your mind. Remember the steps you took to become a better person. It's not a destination. It's a lifestyle that you continuously cultivate and enhance. Today is the perfect time to begin, even if it's as simple as writing down a few reflections at the end of the day. Taking five minutes to be alone and listen to yourself can help you form other habits. Including them in your daily routine can help them become the foundation of a fulfilling life. If you have any small habits that have changed your life, please let me know. Share them in the comments below if you haven't already. Your story might inspire someone. If you believe this video could aid someone else in their personal growth, share it with friends and family and join and hit the bell. It helps me discover deeper meanings in life. Thank you for being here. I hope that each day brings you more happiness.